that we need to hear that's not very prayer. Because there are so many things that are messed up in this life. Things that frighten us. We need not fear a thing that you are here and we have placed our soul under your control. We ask, Lord, even this morning, that you would remind us in your gentle but firm way that you have everything as you need it to be. We ask, Lord, that we could just see a, a, a bit of your face and realize that peace that you want us to walk in and enjoy and that we may handle each one of our days exactly the way you want us to handle them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You think that's all? <coughs> wow. <laughs> you have a heart for the Son of God's mind. We'll continue with the traditional song 252, Nothing But the Blood. This reminds me of the sermon series we just had recently in Genesis. What could take away Adam and Eve's first sin? The same thing that takes away ours. Nothing but the blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. <coughs>
process. Okay. And I remember back in the days when uh, we were having children, we had two doctors on that team. There was Dr. Ellsworth and Dr. Pope. They could say the exact same thing, and Dr. Ellsworth made me feel like, oh my goodness, if we survived this. And Dr. Pope, it's all good. It's all good. This doctor was not Dr. Pope. <laughs> but it will be all good. Okay. All right, John. <coughs> Morning. Good to see everybody here this morning. Uh, a few announcements. Uh, tonight at 4:30 we have our hay ride, and at 5:15 we have the Olympian Club and Adult Bible Study, and then at 6 p.m. we'll have food and fellowship in the fellowship hall. So please join us uh, tonight for that. Um, Wednesday at 7 p.m. at prayer meeting devotional at Elders Mus. Uh, please let them know if you plan to attend. And next Saturday, October 30th at 7 p.m. is uh, the Fellowship of Bible Church's Corn Maze at Jumbo's Pumpkin Patch in Middletown. Um, let us know in the next couple days if you have any teams that are coming to that. Um, Sunday, November 14th is our Congressional Business Meeting after the conclusion of the worship service. So that is Sunday, November 14th, our Congressional Business Meeting. Congregational. Well, it sounded funny the first time I said that. And then like, so well, John, do you know what a Congress is? That's yeah. a group of apes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Tuesday, November 16th at 7 p.m. is the Women's Bible Study uh, in the uh, back room of the church. Let's see, what else we have? Uh, on the 13th, there's a piano recital for Terry's students at 4 p.m. Everyone's invited to that. And I'll feed you afterwards, something. <coughs> so there'll be some uh, refreshments afterwards. Um, what else do we have? Uh, on the 21st is our Thanksgiving service and soup Sunday. So that will be on uh, November 21st. Oh, and as you prepare your minds for that, if your family or you want to read a psalm and have a particular psalm or memorize whatever you like to do, would you let me know and that will give me a clue as to how we're going to put this together. <laughs> okay, so um, one of our traditions is to read psalms um, on Soup Sunday. So if your family would like to read a psalm, please let uh, Hank know as soon as possible so you can start to get all that organized. And if it's Psalm 119, just do a part. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to volunteer for that. <laughs> uh, any other announcements that uh, I missed? Benny? Dawn and I want to tell everyone with sad hearts, we're selling our house. Uh, we settled on the 29th. And it looks like we'll be moving to South Carolina at this point, unless the Lord opens up something for us around here. Okay. And we're keeping it in prayer. And just want you guys to know how much we love you, and if you're happy, we're going to miss you all. Yeah, we're going to miss you guys, too. 29th of November. 29th of November, we're going to sell them on their house. So, yeah, we'll miss you guys. Keep them in your prayers. Well, that's not allowed. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's a place we're all coming down. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> Any other announcements that I missed? Okay, this time we'll have special meetings.
prayer. Father, we give thanks today for your grace and your kindness. <clears throat> Thank you and our children in your arms. The safest place to be is in your arms. We pray you bless now as we spend time in your word. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Wilmer, Isaiah 40, 31, <laughs> last week. We looked at a contrast to that. But they that wait upon the Lord, that be the main thrust. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Mount like wings as eagles. Run and not be weary. Walk and not faint. The word but is a contrast to the previous verses. So why aren't people today renewing their strength? Well, back in verse 27, they're complaining about what God's doing. Complaining is not waiting on the Lord. One of my expressions gets me in trouble. Let's get the show on the road. And at the farm, uh, we had different sized hammers. One's a sledgehammer. It can do a whole lot more impact, I'd say damage, than a regular hammer. But we want to rush ahead. So wait upon the Lord means eager expectation. Steadfast endurance means heavily on the Lord. I want to look at some things in the Bible, an illustration of what does it mean, wait upon the Lord. Psalm 123, verse 2. The eyes of the servant are on the hand of the master. The eyes of the maiden is on the mistress. We wait upon the Lord our God to have mercy on us. So it means wait to serve. When you go to a restaurant, what is a waitress supposed to do? Wait on you. What is a waiter to do? A waiter waits. A waitress waits. Have you been in a restaurant where you had bad service? <laughs> Years ago in D.C., when we were still down there, maybe once or twice a year, we would come to a certain restaurant in Frederick, Sunday afternoon, 2 p.m., and have a good fellowship, good meal, and we enjoy the travel up. And so they had a rule, if you had 20 people or more, you all had to have the same meat. Everybody has turkey, everybody has ham, everybody has chicken, whatever. I couldn't get people to agree on that. So we'd always have 18 people. <laughs> and they get off the menu. We'd go to 18, that's it. So we made plans, reservations, 18. Arrived at the restaurant. Well, after church that morning, a couple came to me and said they were watching their grandchildren, like, some folks back here are doing. And they want to come home. But we'll sit somewhere else. Get the restaurant. Don't know who it was. We're ready to We're going back to the table. I mentioned to the hostess that we have 18 at Red Street. We're sitting in front of our group. And these four mother, grandmother, grandfather, and two grandkids. And they're from our church, but they'll sit somewhere else. She went ballistic. She was angry. And we were seated, and she was just was really looking angry. Got the manager. The manager and the waitress were in the hallway discussing it. <coughs> it got so bad, I went to him and said, Would you rather these four sit somewhere else? The restaurant was not crowded. The service was horrible. She took her order. If you want coffee, you get coffee. No refills. They provide bread. When the bread is gone, not replenished. They had a little relish tray, condiments. And when that was it, that was it. Asked for what the jury wanted. She never said anything to us. Never said, do you like the service? Uh, anything I can do for you? When we finished, the old other people gave me cash. So I paid cash to the manager, the cashier box. Maybe it was my fault. I purposely didn't say a word to see what she would do. She never said a word. Kind of like this the whole time. I walked out of the restaurant, walked into the car, told my wife, I'm 
never coming back to this restaurant. Now it's very painful for me. This restaurant was started by my second cousin, Mildred, in the 1940s. And I'd been there decades and decades and decades, and I said, I'm done. I thought, I thought about that later. Those two people had an impression of the whole restaurant. Maybe the cooks were friendly. The suppliers were friendly. But those two people <laughs> had an impact on me. Now, when I give this illustration from the county, I have other people with the same story. Are you surprised? The restaurant closed. You just can't do that. Now, my reason for the illustration is this. We are representatives of Christ. We are waiters and waitresses. They that wait upon the Lord are what? Waiters, fellas. Those that wait upon the Lord are waitresses, ladies. So somebody can say to you, what do you do? You can have some fun with this. I'm a waitress. I'm a waiter. Oh, where do you work? Principal Bible Church. What do they serve? We serve the Lord. That would get a conversation going, wouldn't it? So we, what we do reflects on other people. We may be the only Christian someone knows. And maybe I drew a wrong impression about the restaurant, but those two ruined it for me. And also it means to wait with focus. They wait upon the Lord. Not they to wait upon the government. Not they to wait for Social Security to be increased this year. Uh, we're real with Social Security and they make a great advertisement how much they're going to increase Social Security. Those of us at our age were also with Medicare. Do you know how much they raise Medicare? Never advertise. Generally, they raise it $10 and we get $1 more or nine goes to them. It's all right. We don't focus on the government. We focus on the Lord. Many years ago, one of the professional baseball teams thought they'd do an experiment. They invented a high-speed telephoto camera. And they focused only on the baseball batter's eyes. Not how he stands, not how he holds the bat. Just the batter's eyes. What is the batter looking at? He's looking for the pitch. But how? That pitch is going to wind up and that ball is going to come 95 miles an hour. What some of the batters didn't know. A split second. Pitcher puts his hand up and for a split second they survey where the fielders are. Now I know enough about baseball. The third baseman is throwing the ball. Right? Center fielder is going to throw the ball. The pitcher is going to throw the ball. They found out that the batters who was the hand of the batter, of the pitcher, had a better at batting average than the guys looking at third base. Just a split second. What is your focus? It's got to be on Christ. First Thessalonians 1.10. Wait for his son from heaven. Our focus today is Christ. I appreciate the fellowship of Bible churches, but that's not our focus. We're part of it, but our focus has got to be on Christ. It also means to wait on Christ for help, rescue, and direction. King Josaphat heard that three enemies had ganged up ready to invade. He's outnumbered three to one. Second Chronicles 20, 12. He prayed this prayer. We have no might against this great company. I mean, we're out maneuvering. We're out man. Neither know we what 
to do. Put our eyes upon you. Jehoshaphat said, we don't know what's going to happen. We're going to be wiped out. We, we, we can't do it on our own. We don't know what we're doing. Do you ever pray that prayer, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing. James 1, 5. If any man lack wisdom, let him take a hammer and go at it. Not, that's not what it says. Not the new version says that. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives you a liberty of brains. Not, it'll be given to him. So he prayed this prayer. The rest of the chapter says, these three armies came up, ready to go. And something happened. One of the companies got upset with the others. And so two companies destroyed one of the company. So now he's got just two enemies. And guess what happened? They got fighting, killed each other. And wiped them. They wiped themselves out. They just, that's how God did it. So it means waiting for the Lord for rescue and direction. <coughs> it also means not to go ahead of the Lord. Wait on the Lord means don't go ahead of the Lord. Prophet Samuel told King Saul, I want you to go to a certain city. In seven days, I will offer a sacrifice. Seven days came. Samuel's not there. Is it tall? So, Terry, in seven days, according to the time of Samuel, Samuel didn't come. Saul went ahead and offered the offering, which he was not authorized to do. And it came to pass, as soon as Saul had made an end of the offering, here came Samuel. But he had a message from God. God's rejected you. So wait upon the Lord means don't go ahead of the Lord. Don't linger behind. God's timing is always best. Mine's off a lot. But God's timing is always right. So we wait upon the Lord. <clears throat> What's the first benefit? Wait upon the Lord. He will renew your strength. The word renew means to sprout and flourish like a plant. I guess this old farmer me have always got to plant something. I think Hank's got that same thing in your blood. You've got to plant something. And you put the seed in the ground. And then it begins to like I got a small garden. I'm not planting my beans. I'm counting things at the seed out all the need. Seven days I should see some beans coming up. And how they come up and how they grow. And I confess, the guard is full. So I count how many beans are coming up for a while. And then when I run out of figures and tongues, I quit counting. <laughs> but it's great to see that every spring, how it springs up and grows and corn and wheat, soybeans, and all these things. So we wait upon the Lord, He renews our strength. Got a four year on the front row here. I uh, saw so an article in the paper last week. One of the mainline Protestant denominations had a survey. 49% of the pastors suffer from fatigue, burnout, and isolation. 49% of the preachers in that denomination are fatigued. And what's that verse saying? Wait upon the Lord, and you renew your strength. I'll give you another illustration. How many folks know Pastor Bob Fitz? When he's still living, anybody remember Pastor Bob Fitz? October 18, 2013, you sponsored, hosted a fellowship of Bible churches, Bible conference, with a meal over there. Until more recent. My taste buds activate with the word frizzle because you always have meals with the Bible conferences. I don't expect it every Sunday. <laughs> Bob was the speaker that night, and he was in great declining health. There had to be two men help him come up to this pulpit. It took him a couple minutes to get from the pew up here, and he really struggled. Barely got over here, got in here. And I prayed for him. I thought, he can't even get to the pulpit. What's he going to do? If you remember, I remember vividly because I knew him. He got here, opened his Bible, put his hands on the side like this, and he preached the most powerful sermon he ever preached. 
fiery. He went, he went through the word of God and was valued. His subject assigned by the fellowship, the rapture of the church. He preached like he thought Jesus was going to come and he was going to hang on. And so I thought about that. I knew, I knew him well enough to know he really had major health problems. And when he was going like this, I thought, you know what that is? This is the grand finale. We go to fireworks. Do you enjoy the, the grand finale? They just cut everything loose. And I thought, well, I, didn't, I never told him. When he get to heaven, I'll tell him. He gave the greatest sermon I ever heard him give. Could barely struggle to get up here. What was it? He was waiting upon the Lord. Compare that to this denomination. I won't mention the name. But probably their seminary teachers, Moses, did not write the first five books of the Bible. The first part of Genesis is an allegory. Noah's flood was local. The days of creation were not 24 hour days like now. They deny inspiration of scripture. They believe the book of Revelation is an allegory. Let me ask you something. Did you ever take a book and tear out the first chapter, throw it away? Tear out the last chapter, throw it away? And read the rest of the book and figure out what was going on? That's kind of, that's what's happening. Our churches are not preaching the word of God. These ministers are not waiting upon the Lord. Now another denomination. The people are not happy with the pastor. The pastor's goal is to please the bishop in Baltimore. I'm glad the fellowship of Bible church. We don't have a bishop. Except the one in heaven. And so you renew the strength. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So God's going to renew our strength. Energy comes from the Lord. Mexico exploits. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Rising above the circumstances. Do you ever ask somebody, how are you doing? And their answer is, well, I'm doing okay under the circumstances. What should we say? I'm doing better above the circumstances. What general can you name? Never had a battle, but he's famous. Patton is famous because he was good in the office. Well, I don't think so. <laughs> he was good in the battlefield, and he had battles. There's an ancient Jewish tradition that every 10 years, eagles fly so high, the sun scorches their wings, they fall to the sea, they survive and grow new wings. Some things about an eagle. Seven to eight foot wingspan. They go to great heights. They get a better view. Takes left after. Stay up longer. I'm reading what it says. They can fly as fast as 100 miles an hour. I can count. They overcome obstacles. Overcome harassment. And they fly better in turbulent wind. So, we can have this exploit. Psalm 103, verse 5. God will satisfy your mouth with good things, so your youth is renewed like the eagles. I've always been intrigued when people tell me how weak Christians are. And we survived 2,000 years being weak. I heard God one time say, in my day, we were encouraged to carry our Bibles to school, public school. They said you need to carry a Bible big enough. You can't put it in any pocket if the going gets tough. So I carried a Bible big enough. People said, Marks. One thing about carrying a Bible, it marks you. And when you carry a Bible, people expect you to live by the Bible. So it was a kind of reminder of me. We were never rebellious. Mischief is on the horizon. So I had to watch for that. But the Bible helped me. This book will keep you from sin. Or sin will keep you from this book. So we wound up with eagles. Then it says endurance. They shall run and 
and not be weary. He needs to make haste with an important message or urgent business. Long distance. It means running a marathon. I was in high school, junior high and high school. I was on the track team. 220, 440. Not even the bottom. Let alone the marathon. The original marathon was run in 490 BC at the Battle of Marathon, where a small Greek army beat a large Persian army. The runner was sent 20 miles back to Athens with the news. He said, Rejoice! We conquered and fell over dead. So that's the origin of the marathon. I couldn't even jog that far. I can't even walk that far. So it means you can do things you just think you could never do. Hebrews 12, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. How do you do that? I already mentioned it. Looking to Jesus. I wouldn't be here today if I was looking all about what's going on. And I think I mentioned to you. Someone asked me one time, do you chase rabbit trails? I said, no, too many rabbits. <laughs> so I had to 59 and a half years, still in the book, still preaching the Bible. When I was in ministering in February, one of the elders, after a number of years, observed my speed three or four verses a Sunday. This guy is a great mechanical guy, great details. He came in one Sunday and said, Preacher, at the rate you're going, it would take you 250 years to preach through the Bible one time. At 59, I don't think I'm going to make it. <laughs> but there's so much in here. And reading the Bible, read the Bible through every year. It's amazing. Just keep going and not be weary. The word weary has the idea of exhaust or gasp. I do have a asthmatic condition. But if I do run, I do run some. In fact, I jog <coughs> to the mailbox. We have those cluster boxes, not the house. I'm the only one in the community that does that. The reason why I'm doing that, <coughs> in case for every high school ever has, an over 80 track team. I want to be in condition. <laughs> so thus far, I don't have any competition. But when I do run, if I run too much, I get out of breath. Being out of breath is not the same as asthma. There's a whole different feeling altogether than I can tell it. Plus I have a breath, breathing meter at home. I can tell what my breath level is. And a nebulizer in medicine in case I am too stupid. Didn't stop. So it has the idea of running and, and following the Lord. Second Timothy 4, 7, Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. And that's why I use Bob Fitz as an example. What a man. Now, you wouldn't know it. And I had to go back, since I'm the secretary, get all the records. I had to go back and check the records. Because I told you, that was the last message every day fellowship Bible churches. So I got the schedule out. Four years later, November, he was scheduled to speak. I was convinced he didn't. I got my records out. He died three days, three weeks before the message was delivered. So this was the last one. This was his grand finale. But what the man of God, faithful to the Lord, to the very last, where these other guys were quitting. Wait upon the Lord. Jeremiah 12, 5, it's a good question. If you run with the footmen and they weary you, how will you contend with horses? I'm still trying to evaluate the last two years in our nation. I'm not sure I have a handle on everything about COVID and the border crossings. What's going on in our nation? Well, I wouldn't be surprised for the churches. We might have hard times ahead of us. I don't think that many people are favorable toward churches and Christians. And I'm going pray especially for Christina in the Dominican Republic. Were you aware of what was going on in Haiti? We were told 
on Sunday on our way back before uh, we left and all that. Oh, we got the map out again saying she's in Dominican Republic and not Haiti. But Christians around the world today are suffering. And I'm not sure. It may be that Christians in Afghanistan that are being killed, their relatives <coughs> probably won't think face masks is persecution if your relatives are killed. Not that I'm in favor of it, I'm just mentioning. I don't know. I've said many times, and I don't want to find out, but I think I might. If we have persecution in America, we're going to find out who's genuine, who's not. We're closer than I thought we would be. And I've thought about it. 59 and a half years in the ministry. Within 100 miles of Washington, D.C., my entire ministry. How many ministers within 100 miles of Moscow or Havana or China the last 59 years have had as easy as I've had? Don't know. God will give us the strength that we need. The final one, they shall not be weary, they don't, they don't cast. They shall walk and not faint. Now, a walk is a little better than a run. <coughs> a run to the mailbox. Sometimes. Other times, my wife and I walk to the mailbox. And as I said, it's only one block. In the summer, when really hot. Just about sundown, it gets cooler. She and I will walk about seven walks around to the mailbox. Just talking. Generally, we never make the whole round without talking. Stopping and talking to neighbors. But there's a difference between walking with my wife and talking and running to the mailbox. You don't do much talking when you run. But here, I would say, it's a friendly, agreeable relationship. When you wait upon the Lord with others, you enjoy. I enjoy Christian fellowship. I enjoy hearing how God works in other people's lives as well. I know the folks back here, there are many things you say, God work things out. Our emotions are a little raw. Hate to see you go, but we know how God leads each of us. And so here's a friendly agreement. Genesis 3 8. We have the example of the Bible. God walked in the garden of Eden in the cool evening. And I wonder how delightful that was when Adam had said, oh, here comes the Lord. And they jump and talk with him. And then one day, he's walking. And then I say, where's the Lord? What are they doing? We talk about every walk of life. 
We don't meet how a person walks. But every walk of life may be a farming community. Uh, Calvary County, in, my, in earlier days, with fishermen, was a different walk of life with the fishermen than farmers in Frederick County. So it might be people can tell we're Christians by the way we walk, by the way we live. They're watching us. They're observing us. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. There are some people, I don't want to walk with them. I don't want to live the kind of life they live. You wait upon the Lord, and so not faint. You won't get tired. God renews your strength. Galatians 6, 9. Maybe for you folks here. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Let's keep our eyes upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. He will renew our strength. We'll mount with wings like eagles. We'll run and not be weary. We'll walk and not faint. May it be yours. Wait upon the Lord. Let's bow in prayer. Father, we give thanks that you know what's best for us. We look to you to lead us in ways of righteousness as we pray in Christ's name.
because on July 15, 1985, my brother and I were singing duets and we were practicing this song with Audrey Warner as lightning would hit our bank guard and in 15 minutes everything destroyed, 12,000 bales of hay and straw and the next day my father diagnosed terminal cancer. We sang this song. It is well with my soul. Heavenly Father, oh, to fly like the eagles and to have your view, help us to wait upon you. Let you be king. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.